frustrating things for me when I played in the NHL was that question, oh, I didn't know Notre Dame had hockey. It's been around a long time, and we've had some great coaches and, and players and personalities go through it. Here's a shot, score! It's always been a sport that fit well with this university. Sort of the ethic of it, you know, it's a tough um, blue collar sort of sport that matches our roots. It's about excellence, and I think that's what you see today. And Notre Dame, for the first time, is going to the Frozen Four. Over the last five years, they brought this hockey program to a point where this is now top-notch college hockey. And it's an event, and people look forward to coming to a Notre Dame hockey game. Good start here, let's get a good start. Here we go, White Eye, here we go! Everything about here is just unbelievable. Every player that played here over the years dreamt of it being at this stage. And believe me, now everyone knows that Notre Dame has hockey. University of Notre Dame reached the 2010 Frozen Four National Semifinals, only to lose with the summit in sight. The Irish begin 2011 with a clean sheet and a clear goal: finish the climb. Last year we flew under the radar. Um, we had a we had a great team, and only we knew it, and that was the best part about it. Anders Lee going towards the net. Anders Lee should scores. Leading by example is big. I think underclassmen always want to look to the upperclassmen as to see what's expected of them. Centering pass for Mayday, shot, score! The corner, middle front of the loop, goes to the championship game. We're still a work in progress. We got a lot of potential but you know, potential is like the most used word in the vocabulary for coaches. Hockey can have success here at this school, and it can be uh, you know, one of the elite hockey programs in the country. Notre Dame du Lac, Our Lady of the Lake. From the shores where a fabled university arose, Frozen Waters and Father William Cunningham gave rise to Notre Dame hockey. Father Cunningham was an ice skater. He was also a teacher. Uh, eventually went on to be the director of education at Notre Dame. And most of your hockey players came because they were either baseball players or football players. And they would come down for training purposes. And that's really how it started. Several of Newt Rockney's football players took the ice on St. Mary's Lake. Names like Paul Kastner, O.J. Larson, and Hartley Henderson. But soon after, the program stalled. It wasn't until the 1960s that hockey returned to South Bend, then rapidly moved from a club sport to the varsity ranks. In 1968, the Irish came in from the cold with a new home and a new coach. Notre Dame hockey began its rise to national prominence. You got to remember, back in 1968, college hockey was really in its infancy. At that time, we had three scholarships the first year. Then the rest were all walk-ons. We knew it was going to take some time, uh, but we always welcomed uh, working with the type of athletes we had here who were interested in getting a good quality education and the chance to play Division I college hockey. I think once in a while, Lefty and I would look at each other and say, uh, it's been slow going, but I think we're headed in the right direction. Lefty Smith's 19 years behind the bench would be measured by 307 wins on the ice and a success rate in the classroom that numbers alone cannot calculate. I had 126 uh, former players. Every one of them got their college degree in four years. Some of them went into pro hockey. Some of them just took jobs, but they've had uh, remarkable success. 
in the business community. Following Lefty's retirement, Rick Schaefer guided the Irish over the next eight years until 1995, when a Notre Dame alum returned home and sparked a new ice age. I was playing in Washington and actually had been offered another year to play. I had no intentions, zero intentions of coaching at any level. For Dave Poulin, the chance to lead the Golden Domers into the 21st century was the golden opportunity of a lifetime. A decade of growth under Poulin paved the way for coach Jeff Jackson to take the program to the next level. You know, I had been out of college hockey for 10 years and I really missed uh, the day-to-day -day coaching and to have a chance to do it at a program that I thought was a diamond in the rough. That was an outstanding opportunity. Keep your eyes on Ryan Fang, number nine. Here's Fang between the circles. He scores! Ryan Fang puts it upstairs! Notre Dame has won in the NCAA tournament for the first time in their program history. Got to get the shots off here. They do. Save made. Rebound right wall middle. Scores! The Irish are going to the championship game! Gerby winds up. Doesn't take it. Whitney, look at the room moving in. Scores! Power play goal! It looks like it's approaching midnight, Gary. Cinderella may have the pumpkin come along. We were disappointed, but to this day, I believe that that was the turning point of our program where people recognized that Notre Dame could have a successful hockey program. Success under Coach Jackson brings Notre Dame hockey closer than ever to Father Cunningham's vision, a prophecy nearly a century in the making. Sometime in the distant future, when a national championship Notre Dame hockey team is playing in Notre Dame's own mammoth ice arena, and thousands of spectators are doing homage to the hockey lock and bars of the West, some inquisitive person is going to ask the world at large just where the idea originated. He will perhaps speak thusly, say, just who started this thing? dedication game is underway. Across the street from the historic Notre Dame football stadium sits the Edmund Joyce Center, home to Irish hockey since 1968. And while the stadium dates back to the 30s, it's the hockey facility that had grown outdated. We were under the stands, so you always had to constantly worry about where your head was at. The Joyce Center was definitely a challenge from a lot of perspectives. I mean, um, it, it, it had seen its best days. For instance, like at the end of a first period, if a guy needed a skate sharpened, for me to go from the locker room to my equipment room to sharpen it, I would have had to go through the public area. They had a uh, big blue curtain on the one side of the, uh, of the rink. Instead of a wall, it was just a curtain, and the other half was the dome. All the air and noise went around the curtain and kind of went out through the whole dome, and it uh, makes it tough for, as a home team, to kind of create a home atmosphere. It wasn't very loud, to say the least. I think people recognized that it really just didn't fit with how Notre Dame did things and it really didn't meet the standards of all the other construction and facilities that were on our campus. In 2009, Notre Dame announced that they were raising their standards. The new hockey arena would stand as an example of the school's collegiate Gothic architecture. The state-of-the-art facility would stand in a class all its own. With an 18-month construction schedule, the team remained in the Joyce Center focused on each game while playing toward the future.
before the Irish could play their first game at their new home, they must say goodbye to their old place. Too slow, too slow. Stay up, stay up, stay up here. You can talk all you want, you better put it on the ice. The last game was not the storybook ending the Irish had hoped for but it was an ending all the same. Closing a chapter in the annals of Notre Dame hockey. It's moving day for Notre Dame hockey. For the team, it's a little like packing for a road trip, except that they will arrive at a new home while leaving their old home forever. Okay. We're leaving. <laughs> Do I have my, what's it called, pad bag? Like, Rob, can I have it, please? Even if their new home promises a better future, it can still be hard to say goodbye. All right, guys, uh, listen, I just want to say goodbye to this place, all right? There's been a lot of special moments here. So I want us to remember the humility of this place. So yeah, we're all anxious to get out of here. But never lose sight of what we have here. And it's had special people in this, in this room. A lot of special celebrations. So, I want you to honor it one time with the fight song. Good boys. momentous excursion. I think coach wanted us to actually walk over to take the next step for the program, so to speak. It was unbelievable. Uh, you're walking into a place that rivals a lot of NHL rings. It was finally, uh, it was finally here and when we stepped in here it was it was unbelievable. Guys were really excited. It's the, the facilities here make you want to stay and hang out with everybody, and you don't really want to leave. I think the biggest thing is just being able to see each guy's face when they're sitting in there. Before we had that L shaped, and it kind of made it interesting not to be able to see each guy. The locker room, I think, is where the camaraderie starts for a team, and this locker room is a lot different than the, the Joy Center locker room, where you might not be able to see half your team. All right, guys. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, it's something that's been really cool. I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. Um, the way we design these stalls is these are deep enough for both of your helmets. All right. Top will be shin pads, elbow pads. Okay. Pants and shoulder pads exactly the same as at home. So pants will be on the right, shoulder pads will be on the left. All right, let's go. Yeah. I think we did a nice job of trying to make it quaint so the guys can still feel like it's intimate in there. I think that's the biggest thing, is being able to have a locker room where you can see everybody. So you got to be alert to the fade play. They will go with wing around, 
Billy and I are at the top of the horseshoe, so we can come in here and if we need to make an announcement, we can make an announcement. You don't want to forget your roots and where it started, but you know, at the same time, it was kind of nice to move on a little bit and take the next step in Notre Dame hockey. The infrastructure for our hockey team is as good as there is anywhere in the country, including the National Hockey League. Whether it's the medical area, the training area, the weight room, the cardio room. And there's just a lot more space where, where guys can do their own thing. Oh, good start. And I think that helps us get more mentally prepared. The way it was programmed so thoughtfully for the flow of the student athlete, you know, the, the dry locker room, the wet locker room, the access to the ice through the stick room, it's just so carefully designed and, and makes so much sense in terms of the layout. We pretty much have everything we need to be the best team that we can be. And I think we realized that is that we got to make this year special. I don't feel like it's plush enough to where we can get too comfortable. It's not a country club environment, but it is when a, when a recruit comes in to see it, they're going to know, hey, this is all about player development, and that's what we wanted it to be. that will make the state-of-the-art Compton Family Ice Arena feel like Notre Dame hockey's new home. Before the puck drops, there is a time for reflection. We gather here in Thanksgiving for the very generous gift of Kevin and Gayla Compton and their children, as well as many, many other donors who made possible this beautiful arena. May all who use this facility be ever mindful of your many blessings. We ask this Christ. Bridging modern facilities with legendary traditions, this arena will bring the university and the community together. We wanted an extraordinary home for a great program, but we also wanted a community resource. You see a lot of our local families, our community families, are at the game with their kids. We want them to feel like they're welcome. We want them to come back. The youth hockey programs have been so instrumental in the community. That's how you build a base. That was the central part of the decision to do something that was freestanding, not renovate what we had. Because if you're going to have a community resource, you had to have two sheets of ice. While one rink will wake up the echoes, a second rink is awake with the echoes of a community at play and an outreach tireless in its work. I think that's an exciting thing for any family, especially the younger families that we're just introducing to hockey. On two rinks, a journey that begins on one may lead to the other. It takes years of effort to reach the Irish locker room, but even at this level, the road to perfection remains long. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up! Right here! Yeah. Hard, hard, hard! Oh. Got a car! John's, John's, John's right here! Coach Jackson wants to be excellent every year. He's a professor of hockey. When they come to his practice, it's like going to a 300 or 400 level class in, the, in their major. It just happens to be about the game of hockey. But I want our left defenseman to be up a little tighter against these guys. So we're not creating a big space here for that man. If the F2 is way up in this area here, then gap up. If he's back at the blue line, then you can be a little bit deeper. Do you understand what I just said? Oh, it's going to be the most 
important part of the game. Our D don't slide like Western Michigan. They're going to have three on two opportunities. We got to make sure we pick them up. We got to communicate. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It hey. requires discipline all the time, playing our system the right way, uh, working together. Hey, Schneid. When I'm playing a guy one-on-one, -on -one, make sure you just stay with your point because I'll stay up I on the guy. Oh, that's all right. This is going to be the biggest game of the season by far. This building's going to be rocking, and it's going to be up to you to help make it rock and how we play the game. All right, shot three. One, two, three. Finish. After practice, players unwind while coaches gather to game plan for Notre Dame showdown against arch rival and third ranked Boston College. I keep 12, I keep 12. Because they might not swing late, but two out of three times they do. And if we get caught over here, he's got speed. He might blow right by us. Right. I'd rather take him away. isolate and have the right D angle, even if it's late, force the D over, and then we can trap him right in here because they, they'll have one, two, three guys in this side of the ice for entrance. So that's going to be, that's going to be the key, is defending the blue line. We're well prepared for our opponent. We're well prepared for, you know, in-game situations to change lines or whatever may be the case. Three lefties again anyways. It's all a matter of the first guy back reading the rush. Mm -hmm. And then F2 and F3 getting back to the net. They're in a zone. They're not going to cover guys. So if we spread them out, we may have this guy, we may have a back. We may have like a box one in the offensive zone. And that's going to be getting pucks to the net. Next year, will mark Notre Dame's final season in the CCHA before joining Boston College in Hockey East, where a conference rivalry will add to the tensions between college sports' top two Catholic powerhouses. For both schools, memories of their 2008 national championship battles still linger. Boston College putting a rush on here. Smith, Derby, Derby scores! You know, part of it is we are the two Catholic universities that competed the Division I level. Frequently, the kids who were playing for one of the teams looked or considered the other team as well. And so uh, there, there, there's a real intensity to the rivalry. You know, BC's had the exceptional hockey program for years and years. You know, Jerry York's done a tremendous job. So for us to elevate our program makes it that much better of a rivalry uh, for us to be able to compete with them. The annual showdown is known as the Holy War on Ice. And while the trophy goes to the victor, it is not what these teams fight for, but the victory it represents. While the game will be decided on the ice, the battle has already begun. Scouting reports are the weapon of choice. The day before a game, we'll go over, you know, key players on their team, things to look out for. All right, guys, listen up. Just go over uh, their depth chart briefly. Obviously, the second line, their 24s line, 1924 and 12s, probably um, one of the best, if not the best line in college hockey. Now, as far as the game plan goes, they use an aggressive 1 2 2, and I want you to watch how BU breaks out here, D man. All right, you see BU's F1? He's on top of the center, actually. Now, the center will come back high and re support, and that's where our F2. He's got to be back here reading where that guy's going. If there's something uh, that needs to be analyzed or looked at, he's got it, and he's got it under his belt, and he'll let us know what needs to be done, and we're always prepared. And I want them to know when they come in here tomorrow night that this is going to be the most difficult experience that they've faced thus far. We have to play with that confidence that we can play our best game of the season because we're going to have to. We're going to have to play our best game of the season. Come on, finish checks on him. John's steamroll. Ryder at center ice. With first light dawned a new era in Notre Dame hockey. And a game day rife with the opportunity to seize a moment in history.
have the confidence to go into this game knowing that you're as good as any team in the country when you play the way you're capable of playing, and that's the key. One, two, three, four. Let's go! Let's go! of the University of Notre Dame. Welcome to the dedication game between the third-ranked Eagles of Boston College and your fourth-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The players are set, and the Irish win the opening draw. Nice win, Riles! While the game settled in, the emotion of the Notre Dame faithful ramped up. We knew that the, the place was going to be rocking, and it, it certainly was. It's a Frozen Four type atmosphere here tonight at the Compton. At both ends of the ice, opportunities arrived in flurries, and hard hits punctuated calculated risks. I think the physical play is important, you know, just letting them know that we're still there. We're, you know, gets the crowd into it a little bit. In the first 10 minutes, they were kind of all over us, but, uh, you know, just calm down and, you know, boys play our game and we'll be fine. So you can kind of tell some guys were a little anxious, but, you know, that's normal for a big game like that. Hey, pick him up! Cover to us. Team captain Sean Lorenz was a second coach on the ice and a vocal leader on the bench. In there, boys, they're gonna do that all night. When you're wearing a letter, it really designates you as the guy to go to if something's going wrong. It's all right. Well done. It. I think it's really nice that he's he's a captain, and uh, I have a captain defenseman for me. Uh, is is really nice because I can communicate with him if if I don't like something or if I uh, if I see something's wrong, or he can either get it changed or he can do something to help. Stronger plays with the puck, boys. We're making soft plays with the puck. They transition quick, so you got to get up the ice quick. Uh, he's made it very clear from the start that we can't, we can't play slow. We can't play a, a soft mentality. We have to be the, kind of the underdog. Costello centers for Woodbridge. Tipped away. Loose puck. Costello walks in in front. And a save by Milner. And as there was a battle for the rebound, Cross just stay in into the goal, knocking it off its moorings. Listen, you know, you know their winger, you know their deer coming down hard on the walls, right? So we gotta make sure that we're high. Weak side wing has gotta be high, not low, because you're getting pitched. The longer the game stayed scoreless, the severity of every opportunity was magnified. Now rolls, right point, McLeod has it. He'll take a quick shot, save Johnson. I think both teams were trying to get to the net pretty hard, and uh, you know that obviously has a big effect on the game. When, when the goalie doesn't see the puck, it's hard for him to stop it, so that just makes goalies' lives miserable. Now Russ breaks free, passes center point. Russo, slap shot, tipped in front by Lee. Milner found the puck. There we go, there we go, a little life. A little life. Let's switch it, Billy. Let's go. I need a big shift. Passes into the slot. Almeida pass off the mark. Almeida got it on the left boards. He sends it in front. Puck is loose. Johnson kept it out. Now we've got pushing and shoving. The goal is off its moorings. And we might have goaltender interference against Boston College. Hey, make a review it, Sean. We've got a penalty shot. They're going to say a Notre Dame player other than Johnson covered the puck in the crease with his hand. Yeah, he's up behind him. Johnson 
the X made a good play. It's probably going to come across the line. He grabbed it, saved it from going across. But it's a penalty shot. No, he pushed it under the goalie, is what my no, video guy just said. He's going to get the goalie across the goal line. He doesn't got to be off the ice. So now we're going to have a penalty shot. For Boston College, Chris Kreider, leading scorer for the Eagles. Takes a quick snapshot, scores! Beats Johnson, blocker, one nothing. Boston College. You, you missed at least three calls on them, and then you make a ticky-tack call on us. Riley, let's go. I need a big chef. Let's go. I didn't see what happened with if someone covered it or not, but... Uh... He called the uh, he called the penalty shot and uh, so he he came down. He made a nice move and uh, he shot a low blocker and uh, obviously that's not not how I wanted to attend the first period. Irish fans played while Irish players regrouped. Well, there's nothing we can do about the officials. Keep playing, keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. They're starting to get under their skin too, boys. Just keep on playing hard. They're just gonna, they're gonna fall apart. We were down one nothing. Uh, you kind of have to do damage control and make sure everybody stays calm. And that's the biggest part of it is kind of managing the team. Hey, listen, guys. We, we we just can't. What? And I'm guilty too. But we gotta calm down. All right. We let our emotions get the best of us. That's when we broke down. We didn't even play our best hockey at all, and I think we were still fine. As we did. Come on, boys. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Yes! Here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. has a chance, a great stick handling move from the right dot, took a tough angle shot, tried to sneak it short side, save made by Milner. Under a steady drumbeat of pressure, Notre Dame stepped up their assault on the Boston College defense. Tynan left dot, takes a shot. DJ Tynan scores for the Fighting Irish. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. Austin Withers kind of dropped the puck to me. I was trying to just get on that. I was trying to get off. I was pretty tired, and I kind of just threw it in between the kid's legs, and it kind of just went through the goalie, and uh, I saw it go in the net, and I was pretty excited about it. It was just a little harmless shot towards the net, and I mean, Good things happen when you put the pucks at the net. With the student section behind the opposing goal for two periods, the visiting goalie must face endless taunting. Every time on the breakout when we're going up the ice, the underneath D is wide open because they're over they're overcoming back. Yeah. Every time it's open. Cross ice speed, Wuthrich, the freshman, skates to center ice, goes back cross ice, Shea and plays it off the board. Shea and skates to the dot. Down low, Tacker! Score! Shea Tacker! Two goals in two games for the sophomore defenseman! One thing that our team wanted to stress was not to just lay back and let them come at us. We wanted to go back at them. Uh, we didn't want to play too timid or, uh, or relaxed. Win the battles, boys. Win the battles. Go, go, skate. Oh, I'm skating. There's the draw. EC wins it. Right point cross. Takes a low shot. Saved by Johnson. Rebound loose right goal line. They score with two seconds left. No, they wave it off. Two point one seconds left, and the Irish might have just dodged a huge bullet. The ref told me that the uh, the player batted the puck towards the net, um, and and then played it. So apparently that's a penalty. I didn't know that rule, to be honest. I mean, that was a game changer. 
but I mean, it kind of saved the momentum from going from, from us to them. Third period here. We need to have the best third period of the season. I've told you before, it's a matter of having poise and patience and staying out of the penalty box. Let's have our best third period of the season here, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's have some fun here. Let's go. Preparing for period number three. Fasten your seatbelts. I have a feeling it's going to be a rough ride, but it's going to be a lot of fun. The players are at center ice. The puck has been dropped, and away we go, third period. Holding a one-goal lead, Notre Dame channeled their energy into defense, aimed at holding back the Boston College onslaught. Come on, finish checks on him. We knew that there was lots of time, and we just kind of kept the Kept the momentum going. And that's the way boys. Keep on skating. Get skating with it. John! Steamroll! Reiner at center ice. Great defense by Billy Maydeck. Here comes BC again. Almeida takes a shot, puck loose to the high slot, tipped away by Tynan, and Moulin was going to take a point-blank shot. Loose puck, centered in front, Johnson sliding across, made the save. We just kept going, and uh, Johnson, you know, was right there for us. No rebound, Johnson made the save. The action was contained to one side of the ice. Scoring opportunities favored Boston College, and a momentary lapse was costly for the Irish. Boston College tips it in, and the Eagles have tied the game up at two with 2.10 to go in regulation time. Goudreau, who had Lorenz all over him, Backhands at home, and we've got a brand new game. We dominated the third period, and uh, they got they got a, a bounce or two, and they put one home. You got to have a short memory for sure to be a goalie. I think that's probably the biggest thing is just letting things go and and just worrying about the next puck. Second ticks off the clock. We played 60 minutes. The Irish and the Eagles tied it two. All right, bring it in. Let's settle down here. Bring it in. I hooked it down like I didn't know what to do. I thought you had it. That's my fault. Them scoring a tying goal in the third really didn't even influence our team as it probably should have. We shrugged it off and we knew that we were playing pretty good hockey and we carried that into the overtime. Hey, boys, listen, hard hockey here, all right? We go for the win if we have the chance. Good plays with the puck, chip it in, put some pressure on their D. Let's make sure we're strong on face-offs, especially in our own end. I think that's the biggest thing when, when you give up a late goal is, is not to get too rattled because the game, you still have a lot of hockey to play. Um, and I think we did a nice job rebounding from that because we could have easily gotten down on ourselves. There's the draw, BC has control. As the puck dropped on overtime, the first scoring threat quickly followed. Oh, oh, no. Whitney brings over the Irish line, left point shot. The puck hit the right goal post. Johnson never saw it. My, oh my. Have a little life here, boys. You're in a tie hockey game. Come on, let's go right back at him here. The Irish win the draw. Lorenz will play it behind the goal for Calabri. Sam will skate up the right side of his own zone. A pass to the red line, Tynan. Tynan over the line, left side. Into the slot, Ross. Down low, lead. Shot safe. Rebound. Oh, he shot it wide. Had an open net. Missed it. Gotta get in. Go, 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 go. Help him. Yep, yep, yep. 
the clock wore down on overtime and opportunities broke both ways. Neither team could seize the advantage and a draw seemed all but inevitable. Huck rolls to the right corner. Can BC clear? They do with 13 seconds left. Calamita got by Calabrese for a moment. Calabrese recovers. Dumps it back into his zone. Zone for Lorenz. Up for Russ. One final push up the ice. shot one moment stands alone as the culmination of everything and everyone that have led Notre Dame to this triumph Irish three Boston College two a moment frozen in time